Hey everybody, welcome back to another land. Please find any get with plus two wins in a row. To what do we owe the to what do we owe the pleasure? You may you, who, cats leaving, cats coming in. What's going on here? One one in, one out. Okay. It's like uh, going to the bathroom in middle school. You know, if one of your classmates is already in the bathroom, you can't go. Six nine seven eight WSP seven. Dude, stats are good minus our speed stat. And placebo is interesting. Ladder, not really. That ladder is a, an artifact from a bygone era. Where not every sixth item gave you the ability to fly. Or contributed towards a transformation where you could fly. But that's okay. It's not just an item. Fly. It's also Sugar Ray's best song. What about every, what, what, what about every morning? That's what you sound like. That's what you sound like to me when you when you talk that nonsense about every morning. You know what I like about Fly is that you know it's got rock and roll sensibility. Like Mark McGrath goes pretty hard, um, but then it also has um, DJ Meerkat in it, so it has a little bit of that like hip hop atmosphere as well. You know, you everybody remembers his classic line. Oh, what you, what you, what you, what you, what you want? Oh, what you, what you, what you, what you, what you, what you want? Classic song, dude. Really a a, a great melding. Two different genres. Couldn't go anywhere without hearing the song "Fly" by Sugar Ray. Really, between the years of like 1998 and 2003. And everybody was always happy to hear. It showed up in every movie with the protagonist under the age of 18 years old. Little, little slice of pop sunshine before Mark McGrath became one of the hosts of Entertainment Tonight. Which, honestly, I can't really blame him for. Um, this was not the right place to put that bomb, but hopefully we'll get another bomb. Okay, no such luck. That's on me. Big Chubby. <laughs> Big Tuna. Bomb, please. Um, why not take Samson's chain, at least? But You know, it, it's one of those jobs... I don't think you can be mad at somebody for taking a job at, at Entertainment Tonight, you know? It's like the most stable job in the history of planet Earth. It has to be, right? I mean, I don't know, that's not to say that entertainment tonight, you know, couldn't go off the air at some point, but... Literally, I mean, you're probably getting paid, maybe not seven figures, but you're getting paid six figures to just go like, You wouldn't believe what happened to F. Murray Abraham today! <laughs> it's a dream come true. I'm not saying it's that fulfilling, but at the same time, what is, you know... You, you work an honest day, you get an honest wage. Um, regardless. Give me, this is one of the few times, like, you ask me what I want from this boss, I'm like, dude, matchbook wouldn't be so bad. We could, we could get a lot of momentum off of a single bomb right now. Come on, Big Tuna. He's done it. Wooden Spoon. I think we're just gonna leave. It is unfortunate, but I am happy to have a speed upgrade. Nonetheless, definitely not going to touch that yet. And there's a, a good opportunity to use a bomb again, if we get the opportunity. Anyway, I haven't had a Marathon Isaac Day in a while. This is, uh, you know, this is my third episode recorded today. I mean, it's not really a marathon, but with so many series on the go, we've really, uh, I say we, but like, you know... <laughs> Northern Lion Incorporated is not a one-man operation, but most of the day-to-day -day duties are handled by a single entity. <laughs> that would be me. But, uh... I think we'll go back for this one first. Um, you know, with so many series on the go, kind of like always we've had a day where uh, one series has been uh, a little bit behind some of the other ones. So, you know, I, rarely has that been Isaac. Now I got a chance to actually bust out some Isaac, extended Isaac gameplay. And I got to tell you, 
feels pretty good to get back in the groove. Maybe that was my problem, you know? I found pills. Sometimes, you know, it's like... Uh, I'm trying to think of a good example, you know? I'm, I'm trying to think of an example that is not just working out. But if, you know, if you were really... Oh, no, what have I done? But also, that's not that bad. Um, big tuna picking up the scraps. You know, if you were, like, used to doing, like, an hour-long workout, and I was like, okay, today, all you got time to do is, like, you know, 20 push-ups. You might be like, if I can only do 20 push-ups, it's not even worth doing it at all. Sometimes that's how I feel about videos, you know? Oh, we'll give it a shot. Um, you know, you don't hit peak performance on episode one of the day all the time. Sometimes you gotta fall into like a little bit of a routine. You gotta, you gotta dig out that groove. I'm hoping that's what's happening right here. Although to be honest, on the two runs we've won today, we haven't really had to play very well. The flip side of that is on the runs where we lost, we didn't have to play badly. <laughs> so I don't really... It doesn't strike me as a situation where I should apologize that much. But still. This would be a great time for a modestly valuable deal with the devil. Oh, I mean, who doesn't like a bone heart? Um, so here's the thing, dude. Don't get mad, get glad. I am not going to worry about losing Big Tuna. That's my boy. What we will do is pick up Brimstone and the Bone Tears. Feel pretty good about it. Is this two Brimstone runs in a row? Yes. Am I going to apologize for it? No. Why? Because it's not 2016 anymore. You know, it's... Uh, it's, it's many years past 2016. Ah, my bone heart. I was actually struck. I had a thought uh, when I was shaving the other day. You know, people always talk about shower thoughts. I have shaving thoughts. I guess I, you know, my typical shower is probably like under 10 minutes long. Shaving takes a little bit longer. Most of the time, I don't get into the, the, the great deep thinking REM thought patterns on a typical shower. But I was thinking like, you know, everybody knows time passes, but some different ways of like contextualizing the passage of time feel weird to people than others. Feel weirder, I should say. Like the one that people bring up all the time is like, did you know that like Cleopatra lived closer to the modern day, like the, to today's date, than she did to the building of the pyramids? That's crazy to think about, right? Because when you think about ancient Egypt, you're like, uh, you know, Cleopatra, Egypt was troubled by the horrible asp. Yeah, 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 yeah. You think of them as being contemporaneous, but really, like, Cleopatra is closer to our current time Speed up. than she was uh, to the pyramids themselves. The pyramids were ancient. Yeah, I know I say it weird. Uh, to Cleopatra as well. But here's one that I was thinking about. In 2020, starting from January 1st, 2020, 2050 will be closer than 1990. I think that's one that people are going to want me to keep under wraps. Because they're going to be like, yo, that feels too real. Especially if you were, like, born in 1990. <laughs> the idea that you're closer to uh, 2050, which sounds like, you know... I mean, if you watched a science fiction movie and it was like Earth 2050, you'd be like, yeah, that's not that far away, but I could still believe what's happening here is like from a, you know, we could get there. But 1990, like 2050 seems really far away. 1990 doesn't seem that long ago, depending on when you were born, probably. It's weird, right? Now, to be fair, you could say the same thing right now. You could say like, ooh, you know, 1989. Or that 2049 is closer than 1989. That's true, but like, you know, it doesn't sound as good. The right time to unleash it is, is on an even number, you know, like at the turn of a decade. It is crazy, it, you know, it's crazy for me to think that in uh, 
you know, next year. Be closer to 2050 than 1990. Like, when I watch a movie and it takes place in the 1990s, I'm like, this is, this is the current day. Even though it's definitely not. Because people, have you seen the size of the cell phones back then? Oh my god. The iPhone was, a, was but a twinkle in Stephen Jobs' eye. Anyway, that, that thought struck me. Didn't really make me feel old. Really, I weaponized that information as a way of making uh, my viewers recognize that they're getting older. Because, like, again, much like a couple episodes ago, I talk about, you know, you're going to reap what you sow with the bald jokes once y'all start going bald. Um, sounded a little petty, but you get what I mean. Um, it's kind of the same thing when you're like, hey, you keep talking about how old you are, boomer. Then I'm like, you know, hey, uh, you're closer to, you know, 2050 than you are to the year of your birth. They're like, oh, I'm old. Yeah, no kidding. Welcome to the freaking show. Uh, 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 we didn't need to do that, but that's okay. Now you get it. Now you're picking it up. Anyway, don't expect any sympathy from me. It is funny, though. You know the, the old uh, video game wisdom that's like anybody uh, worse than me has no skill, anybody better than me has no life? That's the way I think everybody feels about people complaining about getting older as well. You know? I'm 30. It's not that old. When I hear 20-year-olds are like, I'm getting old. I don't even watch Paw Patrol anymore. Wow, it's crazy to think there were kids born in the year 2009. I'm like, yo, dude, it's crazy to think there's adults born in the year freaking 1995. That's insane to me. People tell me they were born in 1995, I'm like, what are you, 11 years old? Obviously that's just bad arithmetic, but you get the idea. Um, but then I'm sure, you know, I'm like, I'm old. I care about my body now. You know, people that are like 80 years old, they're like, yeah, I'm old. 75% of the people I, that were born in the year that I was born are now deceased. And I'll be like, you know what, dude? You are old. That's fair. <laughs> I don't know. When does that stop, though? You know? Like, if you're in the Guinness Book of Records for being, like, the second oldest person in the world, does the oldest person in the world, you know, do they still lord it over you? You know, I've lost four of my senses. This bit's getting a little bit macabre, just for the record. I've lost four of my senses. I'm old. And then the oldest person in the world is like, Wah, wah. All I hear is, I still have the ability to smell. Quit complaining, you dang centurion. That's the term for somebody born at the dawn of the 20th century. In my head. Anyway, I don't know, man. It's just a passage of time. Let's let's peep it. Ooh. I think we like it. We were gonna get a deal with the devil anyway, but like, you know. Why not? What do we need? Well ooh, that's so bad though. Um I'm a little surprised we haven't seen a single pill, but to be honest, I probably would not even take advantage of a pill. Uh, we're one to show up with our relatively low amount of HP right now. I think we just really want to buy uh, as many spirit hearts as possible when they show up or maybe get some HP from this boss. Obviously, like, from a damage and, uh, well, everything but HP standpoint, we're loving life. I guess what I'm trying to say is that age or feeling old is really a matter of like what room you're in. You know what I mean? Like if you're in a, you know, you're in your first year of university, you're in the dorms and you've got a January birthday, you might feel ancient. But if you're 55 years old and retired, you probably feel pretty spry, you know? You're going to bond spiels with people that are, you know, 25 years older than you. 
A bond spiel is a curling tournament. Just in case that shows up on, on Jeopardy at some point. <laughs> I don't know if it's a tournament. It's a curling event. Look, I'm just trying to make sure you don't get to blame me when you lose Final Jeopardy to, you know, some kind of wunderkind who's won 75 games in a row. Thank you. It is weird, though. I've always, uh, I've always felt young because I have a late birthday. You know, I was typically like the... Maybe like the second or third youngest person in my in my uh, like elementary school classes. It's just yet another reminder. Of, oh my god, it's only been 14 minutes. You know, it's yet another reminder of the idea that like, you know, school is a very weird time in your life. It feels like it's not weird because of the fact that it's where you start. You know, and you spend like your first, I don't know. For in this day and age, probably the average person spends like, you know, 18 of their first like 22 years in school. It's pretty crazy, right? But, you know, it's really the only time in your life where you almost exclusively interact with people that are pretty much exactly your own age. And the thing that I would bring up as an example of that is like whenever you get to college... Inevitably, like, every undergraduate program has, like, one person in it that's a mature student. And everybody's like, pss, 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 Dude, what's up with your lab partner? He's, like, 33 years old. <laughs> yeah! I mean, I was that guy as well, talking, you know, I was like, yo, your lab partner is in his 30s. Doesn't that weird you out a little bit? It's just a, it is a very young person's attitude, let's put it that way. But, like, um... You know, that's that's the norm. That's not weird. That's the norm for adult life. Is to constantly be surrounded, you know, with, with people that uh, are of a wide swath of ages, you know? I'm now realizing that I have accidentally constructed a bubble where basically I'm surrounded by people my own age at all times. <laughs> This is the first time I've had this realization. You know, I was in school, like, my, my whole youth life. And then I, uh, I went to teach English in Korea. A job predominantly staffed by people, you know, under the age of 30. Which I also was. Temporarily. Um, and then I became a YouTuber slash Twitch streamer. And you might have noticed... Not a whole lot of, uh, of 50, 60 year old Twitch streamers. There are some. But the thing is... I, do you want to know the reason that streamers are typically around my age or younger? Um, that's because streaming became viable as a hobby slash career. This is my opinion. I don't want to ruffle any feathers, but this will. <laughs> streaming became uh, a viable job slash career path uh, around the time that people my age were early adults. You know, young adults, I should say. Young adults don't always have a ton of responsibility. You know, they don't always have an established career trajectory. And oftentimes, they have a lot of free time to pursue something like that. I, I really think that's why you see, like, you know, you, you don't see that many, like, 45-year-old streamers. I think we just want this. You know, if you were a 45-year-old streamer right now, first off, kudos to you. You're fighting the good fight. And there's no, like, malice dripping from that at all, sincerely. Um, have we had a single pill all run? Thank you. Thank you. Speed. Thanks again, but not as much this time. Uh, obviously, we have taken a range down, I guess. But, uh, you know, so you're 45... Let's say you're 45 in 2020. So you were born in 1975. In 2010, you were 35 years old. I'm realizing now we did the math in such an unnecessarily complicated fashion. Um, you know, 
I'm, I'm getting up to that age myself. Where I'm like, dude, 35 year olds have like literally like a hundred times more responsibility than I had when I was 20. You know, try uh, potentially pitching to a significant other, like, hey, honey, I know I've got a decent job right now that, you know, provides for us and our lifestyle, and, you know, maybe we have kids as well, and, you know, a mortgage that we can't back out of, but I'm just gonna, like, pursue making YouTube videos full-time, and, and hope that it works out, you know? That's a tough sell. When I was 20, all I had to do was, like, i go to my job, you know, get paid, like, my daily rate, come home and be like... You know, saving money is easy. <laughs> yeah, it's easy when, you know, you're at a point in your life where uh, all you have to do to save money is resist the temptation of like, you know, oh, buying a video game or something like that. Still not easy for everybody, I guess. But, you know, it gets a little bit harder to save money when you're like, you know, my job pays me X and, you know, rent slash a mortgage takes, uh, you know, 10 to 50 percent of that. And then, you know. Yada, yada, yada. You get the idea. I'm still lucky to be insulated from most of that, for the record. But I'm just saying... There's a reason there's a huge cohort of, uh... Of people roughly around my age in this business. You know? We were old enough to be like, you know... Hey, I can spend a hundred bucks to buy a Dazzle, uh, Dazzle DVC-100 recorder to try this out. But also young enough that, you know, we could devote a few hours a night to it without having to really justify it. This luck up is, is working out amazing, by the way. Yeah, if anything, uh, the... It, it's, uh... The new cohort of streamers is, is younger than me. So now, like, we're becoming this weird, kind of like, seasoned old guard. They're like, shut up, Grandpa. Stay in school, whatever, nerd. Just sell your bed, become a streamer. <laughs> Malnourish yourself. Live for the dream, brother. Look at me, I bought a Lambo when I was 20. As a result, you should definitely take my financial advice seriously, because I've got my head screwed on straight. That's a little bit of an unnecessary uh, subtweet. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Do I, would I like a Lamborghini? I mean, if you came to my house and were like, hey, I'm giving away a free Lamborghini, I would be like, sure, I'll take that Lamborghini. Thank you very much. But if you were like, hey, I'll give you a good price on a Lamborghini, I would be like, no, thank you. I would rather, I would rather have a more sensible automobile. I don't want to, I don't want a car that attracts that kind of attention, you know? I'm not that kind of guy. I don't want a novelty license plate that's like, you know, Victory Royale with no vowels. Now, my current car blows, dude. <laughs> it's horrible. So even, I don't know if Lamborghinis are the most reliable vehicles on the planet, but it might represent a bit of a, an improved comfort experience for us. But if you were like, hey, you know... We're giving out free Mazda 6s. I would be like, yo! Oh. I don't know why my voice did that. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up again. Get up, get up again. Anyway. Dude, that was a great run. Very fast. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, though, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See ya!